So, so your thought now, because I think a lot about business and advertising and you stop me if you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but it seems like the advertising industry is at a point now where we've reached kind of perfect competition, where it's a lot of, a lot of players, they all do the same or similar things. And so it's so competitive that it seems like competitive forces have basically, we've gotten to the point now where it seems like no one can really find a competitive advantage, which is why you've got five companies that own 90% of the industry. What what are your thoughts? How, how do you create you mean agencies I, I, or, or marketers, clients? Agencies, specifically agencies. Yeah. But uh, what I liked about your agency was that you are trying to figure out how to create a competitive advantage with the content side, combining that with traditional agency. I've always, I, I heard someone say one time, I forget what the gentleman's name was, but he said there's service-based companies and asset-based companies. A service-based company like an agency, you can be in business for a hundred years. And then one day you lose your top three clients, doors are closed, you have nothing. Yep. You have no assets. An asset-based company is sort of like a record label or a real estate company. As you're going along and doing business, you're collecting assets. You have a mm -hmm. store of assets. I think that that might be where agencies could be headed. But what what are your thoughts on creating a competitive advantage in this current kind of monopolistic competitive uh landscape right now where advertising is i feel like so yeah i think um it all has to come from the problem first and i think you have to have an indication of what you know as an example we've had a couple of people who asked to buy us which one uh, not well, not to, to hold ghosts, but weird random okay. plays, right? And we've had a consultancy who tried to buy us, and and private we're equity? always what's that? Private equity, in a way, yes. Okay, because they usually don't buy advertising agencies, but sorry. Well, but they do if they it's if a if it's a financial roll up, right? So this is oh, like okay, where they go, we're going to take, a, and this is one way to do it, right? We're going to take a whole bunch of agents, we're going to buy a bunch of agencies, we're going to eliminate twenty points off the top, bring them together, go from zero to fifty million, sell it at nine times EBITDA, blah blah blah. Boom. And when that happens, the question I ask is, what's the portfolio strategy? Tell me what you're building that solves the problem that CMOs need, other that, than cutting that costs. CMOs have. Yeah. Like what problem are you solving with this approach? And if you're just doing a financial roll up, I'm not saying that's really a viable business or not, but it, like, it, of course it is, but I want no part in that. I think that's not, that, that's just, that's soulless. And I don't know where that goes. True competitive advantage comes from being able to identify a problem that the market has, aligning your services and skill set to solve those problems in an operationally efficient way. And so it's ridiculous to say, you know, like we've had, you've seen production companies who are like, we've got everything under one roof. We've got the sound people to think that that, right? It very rarely works. Why? Because no one was asking for it. No one's going, man, I wish my production, they didn't give a shit. They didn't care. They didn't, it was all back end accounting to the end client. They had, they had, 400 grand to spend on one spot and somebody else took care of all the companies. They did not care about there being one, you know, one throat to choke. Um, so it, it doesn't work because no one's asking for it. So where are things going in marketing? That's the first question to ask. Now, I initially thought that where things were going was the unification of content and advertising. And there is, that is still uh, something that's very relevant. That it doesn't church matter. And state. Church and state. Yeah, exactly. Yep. No longer the separation of church and state, the unification of church and state. So on one level, that's it. But that's a tactical thing. Where I think the biggest move is, is there's um, two things. One, there's still nothing more powerful than a consumer saying, ha, huh, I've never seen that before. Never seen that before. And AI and automated tools and all that, any data-filled benchmarks, does not address that. Nothing. When you're predicting performance, you're predicting it based on behaviors that have preceded that tactic. And if nothing has preceded that tactic and no one has ever done that before, you have nothing to, to base it on. And I think there's still a lot of power in that. So that's one. Secondly, 
that there is, uh, I can't use the phrase, nothing more powerful. Uh, there's uh, almost nothing more powerful than a consumer being given a promise and showing up and having a consumer interaction with a frontline employee, with an app, with a product, whatever, that fulfills what they were, that, that delivers on the promise. And so this is where the experience kind of CX comes in, right? And so what do we have? We have a bunch of agencies who are consulting, coming up with messaging, wherever they distribute it, and saying, this is what this brand is about. And we have frontline employees who aren't delivering on it. Well, that's a massive, what we call an integrity gap. And that ad is going to fail because the inside person didn't buy into it or they had no idea that it was coming or they didn't, they didn't align with those beliefs. And so now that when you talk church and state, yes, it's advertising and content. I think it's also marketing and HR. Two disciplines mm. that have never been together now need to come close, more closely aligned. We need to sell it inside the organization before we sell it outside. We need to get people to change behaviors in their interactions and what they do on a daily basis for that brand truly to come to life, for those beliefs truly to come to life. Now, when if you believe that and no one is solving that, now you have competitive advantage. And that is, I think, our new competitive advantage, which is when we go in and say, you know, CX doesn't happen without EX, without employee experience. So our first phase of doing this work for you is how do we launch this inside the organization before we launch it outside? Oh, that's and, really interesting. Yeah, yeah, no one's doing it. Yeah. There are some inside only people and there's a ton of outside only people, but there's nobody that's doing both. And then that, to, if you're do once you make that leap, well, then you can go training and development and you can go courses and, you know, all those sorts of things. So we just won something that we were hired by the CHRO, not the CMO. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it does make sense. And and it's one of those things, culture in, a, in an organization and HR, they're always overlooked by the bean counters. You know, yep. it, it's, it's never even a thought, but it means so much. It's one of those black boxes that no one wants to get into because it's hard to control, I suppose. But yeah, that's, yeah exactly. that's a really interesting approach. Yeah. So I think wow. that's how you create competitive difference. 